Hey YouTubers, I wanted to do a comprehensive update on the LS swap in my 85 S10 Blazer. Um, I don't know that I've been, I don't know that I've included all the little small details and the information as we've worked out our headaches and issues during this uh, test fitting and trying to make this work on a, the lowest budget possible. Because granted, if you had an, a higher budget or you weren't, you know, deterred from spending, say, I want to say like two to $300 on a, you know, low profile muscle car or custom oil pan, um, if you're not deterred by uh, relocating your oil filter or something like that, I particularly were, tr my goal was to try to get this uh, LS swap in this vehicle without spending a lot of those big expenses with the uh, shorter oil pans, yada, yada, yada. Um, also, just in the middle of the swap, not planned, I'm not going to pretend to have thought of this uh, ahead of time, but when we started talking about moving the engine two and a quarter inches forward, it really opened up the opportunity to uh, possibly save the money to shorten the drive shaft. Okay, from my research prior to starting the swap, I knew that if everything stayed the same as far as engine location, when you go from a turbo 350 to a T5 five speed, you only have to move your drive, or I'm sorry, not your drive shaft. You only have to move your transmission cross member back, whatever that distance is between the mounting bolt holes. You just move it back and align the front holes of your cross member to the rear holes that are in the frame, add two new holes, and that's where it should be. In turn, if you make this chain, Normally, you would move the cross member back, the according, you know, distance of the holes, shorten your drive shaft that same amount, and you're ready to run. Well, because we moved the engine forward, that opened up the possibility of not having to move the cross member, not having to shorten the drive shaft. As luck would have it, the cross member bolted exactly in the factory location, and the drive shaft drive shaft, sorry, fit perfectly. So I just want to make sure I put that in the video that when we moved the LS engine forward two and a quarter inches, I was able to put in my cross member in the same location and run the same drive shaft. And it fit, to me, it actually even looks like it fits better as far as drive shaft length than it did in the Turbo 350. But I don't know, I can't swear to that in a quarter law. But didn't have to mess with the cross member, didn't have to shorten the drive shaft. Um, I do have to raise the rear of my transmission quite a bit because right now my pinion angle, or the, what would you call it, the yoke angle out of my uh, transmission is at a negative and I need it to be at a positive. Um, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time talking about drive shaft angles in this video but your drive shaft angles have to be equal and opposite. So as an example, my rear pinion angle is set at negative six degrees for a vibration re, uh, proof drive line. My transmission should be at a negative, I mean, a, okay, I'm at negative six in the back. So my transmission yoke should be at a positive six. Remember that number equal but opposite. Negative six in the back, positive six in the front. Something that I will have to do is get under there, raise the back of the transmission to see if I can get the angles that I need. If I can't get a full positive six degrees on my transmission yoke, I will have to try to limit the pinion rise on my rear end so that I can, uh, I can add like a pinion snubber or I can add more spring rate or maybe some coilover type shocks to stiffen that rear suspension where it doesn't squat as bad. 
because again, I have leaf spring rear suspension. A lot of people don't realize when you have a leaf sprung rear end, your rear end, the back of your vehicle is not supposed to squat. I know a lot of people might, the ears might perk up when they hear that, but on a leaf sprung car, your rear end, the back of your car is not supposed to squat when you take off. Even when you launch it at the track, it should hit a neutral position, should not bring the body toward the tire, it should actually lift it. Look that up in some of those chassis books or online chassis tuning and you'll see what I'm talking about. But I wanted to go through this list of some of the stuff I've done to the Blazer that I may or may not have been able to mention in previous videos. Uh, number one, I had mentioned the drive shaft and cross member worked out perfectly, unmodified by moving the engine to the two and a quarter forward position with the uh, LSX Innovations adapter plate. Uh, I will be 100% honest. Because I was doing this in the cheap fashion, not setting the engine lower in the chassis, because that would necessitate getting a different oil pan. Because the engine is sitting higher than what it normally would be in, uh, like when most people say, oh, I'm gonna put this LS in this S10, I'm gonna buy this muscle car pan, yada, yada, yada. But because that's so high and I'm trying to run the truck accessory setup, the alternator and the upper plenum of the intake stick through the hood. Like I've had to do some fairly aggressive cutting on my factory hood, which will require a four inch uh, cow scoop. So I just want to be 100% honest with everybody. If you install this engine with the 2.8 frame stand, like those little additional stands that the factory puts on these blazers for the 2.8 engines, if you don't remove those little stands and bolt your adapters or bolt your mounts directly to your cross member, it's gonna hold your engine up an inch and a quarter higher than normal. That is purely because I'm trying to run the truck oil pan with the truck accessories. So 2.8 stands, the rest of the motor mount configuration, it's gonna need a hood scoop. I'm gonna be honest with you, it, it, unless you spend some money and go to uh, the car, okay? If you didn't wanna buy the high dollar muscle car oil pan, if you could find a deal on the car intake and the front uh, Camaro accessories, you could fit it under a factory hood even with the truck pan. You know, I'll go as far as to say that if you could get a go with a car intake and lower your alternator in, in a manner that's similar to like the Camaro accessories, which does require you to run the Camaro water pump as well, you could run the factory hood. But because I'm on that low budget mentality, wanting to run the paint, truck pan, truck accessories, truck intake for the torque, you know, blah, 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 I have to do a hood scoop, so. But I just wanted you to know that I was able to warranty out those rubber V8 frame pads. Thank you, Advanced Auto Parts, for your uh, supporting my project. I guess Advanced Auto Parts might be one of my sponsors because, you know, I didn't realize until I'd taken my old pads up there that those have a limited lifetime warranty on them. And I'm like, well, they're like not even two years old and they're torn, so... Yes, I would like to swap those out. Problem number 1500, those uh, F-body exhaust manifolds I bought that were supposed to clear, because I moved the engine forward two and a quarter inches, the flange, the uh, exit, the flange on the bottom of the manifold touches the A-arm. We are going to lop off that flange weld a two and a half inch extension pipe to each side to get it to where we want it and put some uh oh those little uh i think we're going to use two and a half inch uh what do they call those things it's like a turbo connection that just has the the clamp on it i can't think off the top of my head what it's called but we're going to use a 
two and a, or no two and a half inch exhaust pipe to extend it down to where we want it and that way it'll clear the a arm i'm probably going to just do that on both sides just for ease of uh, taking the exhaust off for future projects um let's see the 20 gallon tank i got a brand new 93 it's the same gas tank that comes in your blazers and your uh, typhoons brand new 20 gallon tank brand new uh, 20 gallon sending unit it's got the an adapters to switch it over to dash six it's got a walbro 255 liter pump wiring kit sock everything has been assembled i'm running uh, dash six eaton line uh, for the feed and return i have the adapters for the intake or the fuel rails on the intake again two dash six for ease of installation and maintenance in the future um, underneath the vehicle on the feed line i have an edelbrock uh, stainless screen like those um oh i can't think of what it is but it's like a high flow filter that's like 40 microns and i believe it's rated up to 75 pounds of fuel pressure so that should work good because I believe the LS engines run around 60 pounds, 55, 60 pounds, something like that. So I just wanted to kind of throw in some information on this video. Um, right now I am actually shopping for knock sensors because when we pulled the plugs out of my valley, <sighs> let me see if you guys can see this. This is one of the good ones. <laughs> When we pulled the plugs out of that valley pan, it were completely caked with mud. Wet, gooey mud that I had to scrape out of there and clean out. And this was one of the good knock sensors that was in that engine. So I happen to have one good one. And this is the GM AC Delco. I have one good one but I'm currently shopping online to pick up another one before I can put my harness back in for my knock sensors. I did go to Star the other day and buy the, uh, I, can't, I think it was Autometer, sells like a little block adapter that goes from the 16 millimeter thread with a copper washer, kind of like a banjo fitting, to adapt from your block oil pressure sending hole to a regular mechanical gauge. I don't know if you guys can see that back there behind the, uh, oh, this valley pan. Cause we've got right here, I've got my dash four line to my dash four adapter that goes into this brass fitting so I can run a mechanical gauge. I'm still working out my plan of where I'm going to hook up my mechanical temp gauge because to start off with I'm not going to have any kind of electronic gauges but you have to monitor at least your oil pressure and your water temp so I figured out the oil pressure setup I'm still going to have to buy some kind of an adapter to hook up that mechanical temperature gauge uh, my computer is currently gone uh, it's out in uh, Midwest City, Oklahoma, having it reflashed to turn off the vats and all that good stuff. So hopefully that'll all go good because I'm not a big uh, online purchaser. You know, some of my friends use eBay a whole bunch, way more than me. I took a gamble, sent it off to an eBayer to have the vats and everything turned off and have it uh, flashed. So um, I will update when that comes in. That way you guys will know, hey, this is a good eBayer. He actually does what he says he's going to do, and the price is right. So, Anyway, I hope this little video kind of gives you an update of where we're at. We're not tremendously far from getting this thing fired up. I just have to buy a few sensors, finish installing the fuel system with the tank, and basically get all the hoses and wiring hooked up so we can try to fire it. So. So far, so good. I got her cleaned up. She's ready to roll. And uh, hopefully she makes some sweet music one of these days. So anyway, I got to get ready to go watch the Chiefs game. You guys have a good weekend.